So I took inch by. Oh, 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 isn't that nice? Nice. <laughs> New uh, added feature. All of our pearls of wisdom are being. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are con consenting to be recorded. So everybody, cool. uh, each uh, get an individual, right? Continue. So, I hit continue on mine. So that's cool. I like that. Well, that's good. That uh, saves our ass from being sued, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, we knew how much money we were going to be able to get out of you guys. Yeah, there you go. Well, you can only go out after the club assets, so there you go. But we'll give you a, D, a DR2X repeater. So, um, Free with every purchase. Yeah, we, um, what I use is aluminum, uh, well, it's the heavy duty, inch by inch square. Ooh. And I bracket that to the tower so it yep. doesn't bend or whatever. Yep. And then when I'm connected, it's insulated from there to the bow and to the the wires going off. And it works very well. It keeps your wind flow down as well. Yeah. Two by four on its side is going to cause a little, little, a little sail. Yeah, a little sail. Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, Rusty, Rusty, is that insulation or is it the actual conductors that are uh, that large? On your wire and yep. oh yeah the, no yeah the conductor it's heavy gauge wire it's you're I don't have know to, what size yeah, it but it might have a steel core you're, you're gonna have to <laughs> no no it's copper it's all copper but you'll have to resonate it if it's too big circular diameter you know well then that makes it more broadband you know the the wider the bigger the conductor the more the, you know I was going for broadband yeah the shorter the wire I had when I did it so. That's why I use that wire, but uh, imagine if you could put up an 80 meter copper pipe, eh? For welding, a yeah, or welding cable or something, yeah, double off. Um, yeah, it's I'm gonna go see if there's uh, any marking on the wire. It's over here, excuse me, dog. We'll say good morning to uh, we've got people rolling in Stan from Sudbury, Dennis from Garson, Michael Hi. from Toronto, Andy from her. Aurelia area, New Market. Uh, oh, we got uh, Igor on from London and Doug from the Sioux. Of course, we've already acknowledged Lou and Jeff. And Hi, Mike. everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Howdy. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. I heard the first half of a howdy duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the duty will come later. <laughs> So oh, there's the, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's probably ten pounds worth of antenna right here. I swear it's heavier than you. Know, I could, damn it. And there is marking on the wire, whether or not I can see it or not, it's a different story. You're gonna have to resonate that. No, I think it's already it's resonant. I've used it before. Okay. Ten it's gauge. <laughs> Well, it says 10 AWG, so it's easy. You're good for 30 Dennis, how, this, how this is a new year, Dennis. You run about 10,000 watts through this, baby. <laughs> What's that? So I'm replacing one of my antennas today. I've got a, a Wyndham um, going up, a uh, new uh, heavy duty. It's a DX. Uh, 80 uh, pro nice and nice. it's uh 93 on one feet i see if you can see it there yeah oh wow yeah. 137 total yep. yeah so and it tells it says it works on 80 40 and 20 and 10 without a tuner your mileage and may vary probably with the the work bands with the tuner and that you know i always have a tuner on it too so I think you able to get 160 to work for it as well with a tuner. Uh, I just don't have the real estate for 160. Oh, It'd be lovely. Anyone <laughs> use 160? Like, I do. I'm, I've, I've got the real estate. I need to. Yeah. My, my, uh, I've got a 600 foot. I've got a, a loop that goes around my property. And I bought in Dayton a few years ago. I bought 600 feet of wire and I cut about a foot off of it <laughs> oh. <laughs> whenever I put it up. That's how close I estimated it. And uh, anyway, I uh, it 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 works on 160. 
Um, it doesn't like 20 meters in my amplifier for some reason. The weird thing is the tuner that's built into my 991A will tune 20 meters on that fine. You know, of course, we're talking 100 watts, but it'll do like, it'll get it down to like 1.2 to 1 or something like that. Um, the, the tuner, the legal limit tuner, automatic antenna tuner I've got to go along with my amplifier. My amplifier is only a 600 watt solid state amp, but, but um, the, it doesn't, it will not tune. 20 meters on that antenna, it won't get it down less than 1.5, 1.6 to one. And my amp does not like that in certain portions of the band. It likes to see it lower than that. It'll actually, it'll fault on me or whatever. But okay. you know, that, that amp, I love it, man. You just hit the band and that's it. You just tell it, you know, it's got frequency ranges on the dial. It's got about six different settings or whatever. And you just put it on the frequency and you start transmitting. And between the antenna tuner and the, 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 the amplifier itself, you know, and the radio talks to it all too. So, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty handy. But for some reason, I can't run the amplifier on 20 meters with that loop that's there. It does not like it. So yes, there must be some higher SWRs. In where there's, you know, the yeah. automatic antenna tuner, you know, is in steps. It's not linear. It's not continuous. You know, it's here or it's here. There's no in between here and here. Just capacitors in. And, yeah, you know, exactly. Right. Right. So, so if I could tweak it, there are buttons on it where you can tweak it, but it just tweaks it between the stems. <laughs> you know, that doesn't do any good. So anyway, here's the space top band. If anyone's used top band, that was a great one. See, that's how I got started. My first homebrew AM 10 watt <laughs> transmitter on top band. I love that band could only run 10 watts in the UK on that band because it was near shipping channels. But uh, yeah, that, that's well, that, was like the two, that was like two meters of the day. Yeah. <laughs> all the 400 watt limit in the UK? Sorry, what did you because say about? Shipping channels, is that why they only allow the 400 watt limit in the UK? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. No, but that particular band was just 10 watts because that was very close to uh, something called Lorraine, which okay. was an early navigation yep. system. Yep. I remember hearing about Lorraine. Yep. Yeah, made a horrible racket. <laughs> now your actually really messed that up. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone know anything about, or anyone use FT8 much? I've tried. I used it a little bit, but not not seventy three hundred. I had. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to find someone who uses it a lot, and because I got about four or five questions. Yeah, I I prefer the uh, the JS8 call because there you could have comments. You could actually. You know, type a message to the other guy. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. FT8, that's like the automatic one, right? Like it oh. does it. It you, yeah. you know, I mean, how, that is okay, but I mean, that's that's I don't know. Really, ham radio. Well, you know, it's almost RTTY. You, you know, well, I, I worked a lot of RTTY in Guantanamo Bay. It was a hoot, but you know, you didn't have to say a word. You just click the call sign, you know, on the screen and it did everything since the report. It's a great center. compromise though. If you, like I just threw up a, a 20 meter dipole from the roof down to the corner of the yard, just about fit it in. And um, I've got horrible noise, but I've actually, you know, made the, I'll call them contacts. <laughs> but uh it's better than nothing. And those are all weak signal things too. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. know, you don't even have to see anything on the display to, to get print. I think about yeah. 40 watts I was using. Yeah. But I have quite a few questions. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Callie. Yeah. Just, Hello? Uh, Hello, is this thing on? <laughs> oh, there you oh, are. On. On. <laughs> Shout louder. Stupid hog. Well, uh, well, welcome the newcomers. We got Philippe uh, coming in. We got Ken from Sudbury. Oh, Brandon from uh, Rhode Island. Uh, great to have you aboard, Brandon. And Janice from Elliott Lake. Ted and Sue from Whitefish Falls. Joey's in there from uh, Steiner area. And uh, Doug morning, uh, Joey. from Sue. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. 
Uh, as people are starting to roll in, what do we got up now? Uh, like 20 or so? That's uh, not too bad. I'm thinking, you know, with the nicer weather and the weekends coming along, of course, it's uh, uh, Memorial Weekend, so some of the stations from the U.S. may not be in uh, indeed. But I guess I should uh, get things rolling here uh, this morning. Of course, uh, I'll start off with some very... Uh, tragic news as I'm sure a lot of you've heard uh, so far. We've lost a, a longtime member of the Manitoulin Amateur Radio Club, uh, Dr. Dave Filmer, passed away last week. I was talking uh, to Krista on Thursday evening, she had called, and um, I kind of had an inclination. Uh, Dave wasn't uh, doing too well. Um, she had uh, emailed me uh, a week ago and said they wouldn't be in on the um, on the weekend or on sat last Saturday morning Zoom. Uh, Dave had uh, kind of uh, taken a week spell where uh, he just had no energy, couldn't get out of bed, and uh, uh, wasn't doing very well. So they were uh, that uh, um, morning. They had the doctor into the house, and uh, doctor had ordered a bunch of tests. So Bruce was going over to help Krista get Dave into the car and take him in for a series of uh, blood tests and that. And uh, anyway, so he went to the hospital on Saturday and um, seemed to rally around a little bit and, uh, and that. And then uh, they brought him home. And uh, anyway, uh, Sunday came along. He seemed to be not doing too bad. But as the afternoon progressed, he was having difficulty breathing and uh, catching his breath and that. And uh, so they called an ambulance and uh, unfortunately he passed away that evening. So, so very tragic news. Uh, he was short, his uh, birthday was gonna be this coming Friday. He would have been turned 89 and, uh, and that. But uh, anyway, he... Um, Long time, just to give you a little bit of history, and uh, we'll do a bit of a memorial net on uh, RMI tomorrow morning and uh, record it and get that over uh, for uh, Krista indeed. Um, Dave and Krista, uh, Krista's family owned an uh, island in McGregor Bay and a cottage there. And uh, uh, Krista had been coming up since she was a, a girl and uh, you know knew uh, McGregor Bay very well and her parents had left her the uh, the property and that and then uh, when she became a pro professor at uh, Purdue that's when she met uh, Dave and uh, anyway they uh, they got married and uh, Dave started coming up to Manitoulin this was way back in the 50s and the 60s I guess and uh, he got very familiar with the uh, with the island and, and uh, of course as most of you know Dave, uh, uh, if you read his obituary there, I had sent a link to it. He's got quite a history. He started off in biochemistry and uh, uh, was uh, taught infectious diseases, if you can imagine. Yeah, really. And then his, uh, his um, expertise turned to astrophysics and, uh, and dealing with uh, rockets. Uh, uh, literally a rocket scientist he has yeah. things flying around in outer space you know yeah so. yeah so he uh and of course he got into amateur radio uh, uh, a long time and of course he heard about the club and the first time uh, judy and i met uh, dave and krista were at uh, um oscar uh, one of the founding members uh, we had our first annual uh picnic get together this was back in 19 19- Geez, I'd hate to say the summer of 88, I'm thinking, because the club started in 88 in April, where we put the repeater up, and I think we had our summer barbecue in August, and Dave and Krista showed up, introduced themselves, and uh, joined the club, and the rest is history. They've been uh, coming up and being big part of the club, and of course, the D-Star repeater, uh, Dave uh, donated that to, to the club with the controller so that we got started. And he taught me a little bit about digital technology with it. And uh, 
Gazenta and Gazada. Yeah. That's, that's how he explained was... the D star. You goes into this repeater and you goes out of the other out of that repeater. repeater yeah. yeah. So he was uh, uh, quite the gentleman and, uh, and we've been at their home. And of course, Dave uh, attended any of us that have been to uh, Dayton. I know Rusty and uh, a few others. Joey was there a few years and uh, a couple of others. Uh, of course, uh, Bob uh, Elston and, uh, and that we, uh, you know, we hung around with Dave and uh, he'd uh, drive in from Indiana and that, so. Really sad in that. Uh, anyway, Krista is doing well, just to let you know. She's holding up as best as she can. She was kind of expecting it. Uh, Dave had gone downhill quite a bit in the last year or two. But um, anyway, it's always a shock when it happens, of course. And uh, he'll be uh, truly missed uh, with it. I thought I'd share. Uh, Krista sent me uh, a couple of pictures that uh, I thought maybe some of you might be uh, interested in. So let me just, uh, of his shack, and uh, taken not that long I've ago. I've seen his shack, so. It, um, so let me, uh, he's got some close-up pictures. It doesn't give you the whole visual because he's got multiple desks that are uh, circular in, uh, in his shack. When you go in, the room itself is... Oh my God, it's it's huge. It's unbelievable. And he's got stacks of books and manuals and, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, materials and that with it. So uh, anyway, this was one of his main uh, latest stations uh, with it. This is a picture of his uh, Yesu uh, FT-101 uh, DX 101 uh, MPs. This is one of the the newer uh, uh, radios that uh, Yesu just came out with, and of course he had his. Uh, he's got the amplifier uh, right beside it over here, and uh, all of that with it. Um, so that's one picture. Uh, let me just go to the next slide here. I wonder if I can. Nice stuff. Yeah, he uh, he had quite the uh, quite the shack there for sure. Um, let me go to the next picture here. So I if that see all photos button at the top would do anything or which one, uh, Rusty? See all photos up there. See all. Oh yeah. yeah. There see all photos. What does that do? <laughs> no, that's all the. Maybe all Every my photos. Is, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got them in a separate file here, so let me just uh, go back here and. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right. I guess I've got to bring up each file separately. So, uh, just give me two seconds, people. Okay, so is this two? Yes, okay. This is number two, go to here. Were they in the middle of getting some tower work done as well? I yeah, think? yeah. He, uh, just like Brian's doing, he had an IF stepper, and the guys were there three weeks ago and have taken it down. They were repairing it and, uh, and doing that. So, uh, yeah, so it's all down. So this is just a little uh, view. Janice, you were talking about a microphone with a touch key pad and everything else sweet, like that. Right there there you sweet. go. This is a Yesu M1, I believe, microphone. Look at this this thing. That's quite the, and it's got a digital readout on it uh, and that for it. So that's quite the uh, the microphone. That's my yeah, dream. That's what I'm talking rig. about. Yeah. yeah my dream that's rig right there. One, oh, can, right on. Yeah. Yes, I want one. I want yes. two because I have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> but you only got one mouth. Yeah, but I got Kali. Are you ambidextrous? There you go. There you I go. ask you questions like that. Do I, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, it's quite a lot funny. of golf. <laughs> quite the thing. And so, no, not at all. Let's go to the next oh, picture. 
It has to cost a billion dollars. So this this next picture coming up, this is the other side of his, uh, uh, one of the other tables adjacent to the Yesu. He's got a table for every make of radio, believe it or not. And uh, um, it, it was quite the, uh, quite the setup. So here's a, and this nice picture of Dave. This is setting, uh, sitting at his uh, ICOM station. So he's got the ICOM IC seven, uh, uh, seven uh, 20, 7610. Yeah, yeah, 7610. I should know that because I got one sitting right over there. <laughs> and then he's got the ICOM 705 over here. Um, he's got the L-Craft. Uh, I don't know if that's a K2 or a K3. Um, he's got the big antenna tuner over here. This is his satellite tracking wow. equipment um, that he can do the azimuth and uh, checking. Then he's got an ICOM 991 as a uh, backup uh, 911 alpha there in his antenna switching unit. And of course, he's got it. All, everything's all computerized and everything with it there. So that's his uh, one station set up. And of course his walls are just filled with maps and, uh, and that with it. So it's quite the, uh, quite the setup when you're in there. It's like being in uh, radio world in their, uh, uh, in their area. It's uh, quite the- uh, Actually looks better stock than radio world. <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, well, he prided himself. And of course, during his retirement, why not? You know, it, uh, uh, it's a little bit more than, uh, you know, the average ham, but uh, what the hell, he had the money and uh, he had the ability to do it. So go for it, you know, that's what life's all about. Sure. As a matter of fact, Krista was telling me he had two or three radios on order um, <laughs> that, uh, uh, per later uh, show or not per later but UPS showed up two days after his passing and she had to send it back but you know I mean it's uh, he was uh, he was buying a few things so another angle of uh, the radio station and uh, and that working with it. We enjoyed every bit of it. Yeah absolutely absolutely and uh, and rightly so um, with it. And what else have I got here? Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have this in a collage. She just sent me this last night. So I just quickly uh, put it together here. And uh, and from left hand side, he has a trophy. Looks like for the, for the first place in the contest from the left hand side, right? Yes, yes. Uh, well, and Dave was uh, in his younger years was quite a contester there too, uh, Igor. And, uh, that's why he enjoyed your presentation so much. Uh, Krista had said that uh, it brought back a lot of memories for him and uh, and that with it. And had he been younger, knew you younger, he would have participated uh, uh, quite a bit in it uh, for sure. So, all right, let me see if I can get another picture, another angle here. Uh, yeah, so here's another angle of... Uh, so this is him using his uh, 705, which is, uh, that's the new, that's the size of the whole radio, believe it or not. Um, fully uh, that's cool. 160 through 440. It's what they call the shack in the box. Now it's a QRP rig. It, uh, with the uh, battery that goes into the back of it, same size as a handheld battery. Uh, plugs in there. It gives you five watts, but uh, if you plug it into 13 volts, it gives you 10 watts out. But I think he had an amplifier connected someplace to it, or whatever, and a tuner and everything. It was quite the uh, quite the little rig. He, he really enjoyed uh, playing on that. And of course, that was his D-Star radio too. Uh, one of his D-Star radios. So uh, that way, and then. Uh, one, I think one more picture here. Um, as uh, Igor was mentioning about uh, the gray line and uh, of course satellite technology had all the satellite uh, radios to uh, track the satellites and, uh, and do that. Um, he, uh, 
you know, most of us uh, were lucky to have a, you know, maybe a 20 inch or 22 inch uh, uh, flat monitor or something like that. Of course, Dave had, uh, I forget, I think a 36 inch monitor on the table beside him to, uh, to watch uh, the satellites and the uh, gray line and uh, all that uh, with it. You can see some of the books and some of the awards that he had up on his wall behind him and, and that. And uh, this door goes into a storage room that is about the size of my shack, you know, that uh, there. So, I mean, he had the whole basement, uh, uh, half of the basement uh, to his, uh, uh, I hope somebody has taken a panoramic uh, uh, camera view. Of a 360 that. degree of that room would be fantastic. Yeah, I'm hoping Bruce will get over before they start to dismantle and take yeah. everything down and and yeah. that with it. I mean, even though Krista's a ham, uh, she's uh, she's not going to uh, uh, you know be into the HF and and that with it. I did, uh, you know, she said she would return and join us on Zoom when things settle down, you know, when she's feeling better and after the uh, funeral. The, the funeral is going to be streamed. Um, she wanted me to share this with everyone. A lot of the stuff I'm saying here, I'm not going to do on the air tomorrow because you never know who's listening and not aware of it. But uh, um, she debated whether to do it uh, if it was right but apparently now in the world of covid because people can't attend funerals you know even uh, dave's family a lot of his uh, his um, relatives are getting upward in age and they live all over the u.s he's got people down in arizona and um, florida and uh, all all over and they're not able to travel uh, so uh, she, uh, a lot of funeral homes now are uh, going to um, televise or, you know, stream the actual uh, funeral in the, uh, he's having a mass. It's going to take place in this coming Friday, June the 4th at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, the link is at the bottom of his obituary. You just click on that and you can go in. And it's uh, it's similar if anybody attended the Canworn training um, the other day, it's one of these, uh, it's not like this Zoom meeting where everybody's picture is gonna be shown or that. They all show the service and you're in the background, uh, your picture and your voice, uh, there's nothing on. It's just, you can watch it. It's like watching a YouTube video, so. So anyway, yes, very sad, and uh, um, uh, certainly the club will send him a card and uh, uh, to Krista and uh, and go from there. And uh, yeah, there's uh, not much more we can do. But thank you for your comments. I did get a lot of emails, and uh, I know you attached it to the one that I sent out. Again, thanks to Rusty for posting it on uh, our uh, web page and uh, Facebook there and that with it. So just wanted to take a few minutes uh, for that and uh, share that information with you. So yeah, anywho, uh, yes. Yeah, we, we mailed that card out yesterday. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. I, I, I can always count on you. Of course, I uh, mailed a card personally uh, uh, from Judy and I too, but uh, yeah, I know we appreciate that. And uh, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you uh, for that, uh, Lou. Unfortunately, we couldn't, you know, we what we used to do in the past is try and get it passed around so everybody could sign it. But it's it's on behalf of all the members, and Krista knows that, so she appreciated that. So 